Hello and welcome back to another video with its Dr. Dan and this time we're going to be looking at the difference between polar bonds which we talked about in our last video on electronegativity and a polar molecule. Now the big difference between these is that a polar bond does not always tell you that a molecule which has multiple atoms is going to always be polar. And a lot of it has to feed into its Vesper geometry or its structure or molecular shape that we talked about in a previous video as well. So this is something that, that takes a lot of the different concepts that we've started to slowly build together and combine them together. So this is where it takes a lot of little things to think about to be able to see the whole picture. So what this kind of looks like is almost like this picture over here that, that I found online. So if you have like a little water molecule, you can see the oxygen is really pulling on both these hydrogens. And it is very similar to what this electronegativity picture is. So for example, if I looked at just the OH bond, and we were to look at that from last time, well, we could say that, okay, oxygen has a value of 3.5, and hydrogen has a value of 2.1. So if we take that difference, then we'll quickly see that oh, 3.5 minus 2.1, well, that is a 1.4 difference. So it's gonna be polar. Now, but OH isn't just a molecule, right? It's just a one bond. So if I kind of complete this structure, and let's say I do it for water, well, water looks something like this, right? Where we have O, it is bound to a hydrogen on both sides, and it has two lone pairs. So this is a bent geometry. So how does that get affected by polarity? Well, the same picture happens. Um, what we're trying to see is, is there a buildup of electrons on one side of the molecule versus another. So if I have the same picture, I have a 3.5 on oxygen, a 2.1 on each of these hydrogens. Well, we can go through our labeling process to show that, oh, the difference between both of these bonds is 1.4. So how can we illustrate that? Well, let's redraw our water. So the first way is just using the little Delta, the little delta symbols that we went over last time. So if I take a delta negative, which for being an oxygen is more, has a higher value, that makes it a delta negative, and each hydrogen is going to have a delta plus, telling you that the unevenness of this molecule is going to be more in favor of the oxygen of this molecule. So that's the ultimate idea here, is that more of it is gonna be on the oxygen. So we can also show the general direction of this dipole as well. So the way we can do that as well is if I take the oxygen again and with the two hydrogens, and I draw my little dots here, well, we can show that the overall change of this is going from a positive side on the bottom and pointing up towards the oxygens in an overall negative direction. You can also, depending on who your teacher is or who is kind of going over all this with you, they might have you do it where each you draw this on each bond as well, pointing towards the oxygens. So it could be an overall, which is in blue, or you could do just the individual bonds as well. And both are both are correct. Um, it just depends on realistically who you're taking this with and how you are looking at that. So you have the individual dipole, so we can represent it that way. So what this is telling you is that being that there is an overall positive on one part of the molecule, this is an uneven molecule meaning that no matter how I kind of look at it, there isn't, there isn't just pull in one direction or another. It's all built up on that oxygen. So when it's all built like that, so if I kind of go back and draw my little orbital picture that I had earlier in the previous video, being that oxygen is delta negative and the hydrogens are delta plus, more of that is gonna be built 
onto the oxygen side of the molecule, where not as much of it's going to be seen on this side. So the seesaw is pushing toward, is on the oxygen side, or the tug of war is on the oxygen as well. So this is the basic idea. Now, looking at this even farther, this can get a little complicated depending on which geometry we have at hand. Because if we're thinking of a tug of war, can geometry play a role to cancel out poles? Meaning that molecules are polar. If the polar bonds, they got to work together, meaning it has to cause a pile up. So like with water up here, we had a pile up on one side. So what we have to see here is we're going to assume the following. So what I'm assuming is that I have a bond AB and that B is more electronegative than A. So if I have certain geometries, these can lead to nonpolar molecules, meaning that if I had, let's say if I start with the ones that we were looking at before. So I had the bent geometry. So this one is like water, for example, we can see that with this one, there is an overall net dipole being that I made it so that the bees are more polar. So they're pulling away from that central atom. It's all going in the same direction. All the arrows are pointing away. They're all pointing down. This is polar being that there is a net dipole. So that overall downwardness from the whole entire thing is it's all down. Now, when I have a nonpolar molecule, these are what I refer to as basic geometries, meaning that they have the same atom, no lone pairs, so no lone pairs, and the same atoms around the central atom. So what's going to happen? So if I take this first example, like BAB, this is like the, both of the bees are pulling in opposite directions and they're of equal strength. So a good example of this would be is something that is a linear geometry. So if I take something like CO2, for example, and I try to draw this one. So let's draw this in another location. So let's have CO2. And I look at the electronegativity differences. Well, oxygen was a value of 3.5. That's on both sides. Hydrogen was a, or not hydrogen, carbon was a value of 2.0. So what this is telling you is that the overall pull in both directions is 1.0. And they're both pulling in complete opposite directions. So one is 1.0, the other is 1.0. So as a result, they're going to cancel. So it's like playing tug of war with yourself in a, in a sense, because they're pulling on the central atom. So if I have a little knot in the middle and oxygen is pulling on one side and I have another oxygen pulling on the other side, they can pull all day, all night. But as a result, they aren't going to go anywhere, even if they keep pulling. So when we have anything that has a central atom with no lone pairs and it's bound to the same atoms, it's going to be nonpolar. So if we look at all these ones in the first column that are here, so whether it's linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, trigonal bipyramidal, octahedral, all of these are capable of being nonpolar because of an even pooling. So that's what we're looking for. Are they even? And that's so if I go through another example, let's say if I have CF4. So fluorine, as we know, is one of the most electronegative atoms possible. Fluorine has a value of 4.0. Carbon is 2.5. So as a carbon fluorine bond, this is 4.0 minus 2.5. That is 1.5. This is definitely a polar bond. We cannot deny that. However, what happens if we put it together in its geometry? Well, being that we have carbon can bond to four things, 
So it's going to make a tetrahedral geometry because there's no lone pairs on carbon. So when we draw that, we're going to have C, F, F, another F, just like so. And we can have that where, all right, well, delta, we can have delta negatives on all sides. And there is a little delta positive on the carbon, but as a result, these are all pulling in equidistant, equi and ec and equal angles from each other. So being that this is an equal pulling, the dipoles cancel. So this molecule, yes, it has polar bonds. In fact, it has four polar bonds. However, this is a non polar molecule because of the tug of war. So just like this one from above with CO2, this has two polar bonds. There's no denying that CO is a polar bond. However, it is a non-polar molecule due to the geometry. Let's try another one. Let's see if it's going to be polar or non-polar. What if I give you NH3? Would this be something that's polar or nonpolar. So we have to first determine what's the central atom. So the central atom in this case is going to be what can bond, what can make more friends. So if you remember from my previous video, nitrogen can make up to three friends. So nitrogen is going to be our central atom. It has five valence electrons. And as a result, we're going to put our hydrogens on each side. So just like this. So now let's label all of the electronegativity. Hydrogen had a value of 2.1. Nitrogen has a value of 3.0. That's right here. So 3.0 minus 2.1. That's going to be very polar covalent. It's going to fit in that little range of ours. So let's write that down for ourselves. The 3.0, 2.1. 2.1, 2.1. We can we can copy and paste this molecule so we have it in a couple places. So as a result, this is going to be very much distributed all over the molecule, these, these charges. We can see that it doesn't seem to be pretty even, but we got to determine the geometry. So being that we have four groups around it, one of them is a lone pair. So this is going to be trigonal pyramidal. And if you're not sure about that, we can look at our little chart here. So we have one lone pair, four groups. So that goes down to here, trigonal pyramidal. So it's pulling in our Vesper structures. There's a lot of stuff we got to do. So our H's are going to be pointing down, like an, like an upside down, like an umbrella. So what that's telling you is that, okay, the overall positive side of it is on the bottom and it's all pointing up towards nitrogen. So is this polar or nonpolar? In this case, it's polar, right? More of it is on the nitrogen or is on the um, nitrogen versus another one. What so another thing to keep in mind is where you gotta look at overall molecules too. We got to look at big molecules, try to see is the overall thing polar. So let's do maybe one last example together. What if I give you something like ethanol? So ethanol is the structure of this is CH3, O, CH3, CH2, OH. Now this is where it comes to understanding how our molecules situated how we can predict geometries on a bigger molecule. A lot of these types of molecules are written how they are bound to each other, meaning that if we can identify all the central atoms, what can make multiple bonds, we can quickly see what the geometry is. So for carbon, right? Carbon can bond to four things. Oxygen can bond to two. So you can quickly kind of see like, all right, well, what is the geometry here? So each of the carbons are going to have very much a tetrahedral shape around 
each of those hydrogens that are being showcased, just like so. And then the oxygen is going to be making two bond or two bonds, one with the carbon, one with the hydrogen. So is this polar or nonpolar? Well, it gets a little tricky. We got to look at the different regions of it. So for this one, one thing is, is that there's specific bonds that are always polar and always have that trend. So one, you can see that there's oxygen and hydrogen. This is a very polar bond. Oxygen has a 3.5, hydrogen is 2.1. That area is polar, which tells you that, okay, this is a polar molecule. However, this region is very nonpolar. So why is this region nonpolar? Well, with CH bonds, CH is just 2.5 and 2.1. It's a difference of 0.4. It's not much. Carbon, carbon, we did that last time. That's a difference of zero because they're the same bond. So we have a polar and a nonpolar region. So with that, it's going to lead to different intermolecular forces, which is what you're going to cover soon, or we're going to cover in a future video together. Um, it's something that it leads to different interactions and different trends. So there's a couple bonds that can help you decide, is this going to be a polar molecule? So if you see like the following, so if you see like HF, uh, HN, HO, these are always usually polar. If you see uh, CH, this is nonpolar. Uh, if you see things that are like uh, CO, CN, these ones are polar. So these are some of the, the little different trends that you're going to look for in molecules. So this little list might help you to be able to quickly identify polar, nonpolar trends. I hope this video helped a little bit to be able to figure out polarity. It can get a little tricky. The more you practice, the easier it will get. Um, and look out for my future video on intermolecular forces so you can see how do different polar molecules, how do they interact with each other when you're looking at these different bonds. All right, well, thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful day, and please hit that subscribe button, so I hope to see you back in the future. All right, bye now.